from the band Dorje. This is a Faith Mercury Scoop Parlor, uh, one of the amazing guitars from Faith Guitars. And my friends at Faith, it would seem, are very close to winning the MIA Music Awards. And if they win, good things happen for all mankind who like uh, lovely acoustic guitars with solid bodies uh, built in Indonesia to an exactingly high standard and quality. So high, in fact, that I only use Faith Acoustic Guitars. In fact, I've got quite a few of them. <laughs> so, in celebration of the fact that they're almost winning the MIA Awards, and to push them over the edge, you could vote for them right here and do Chap as a favour. Um, in, in sort of honour of this and in anticipation of a victory, an extreme victory, I thought I would teach you the riff I just played. Uh, I've been asked to teach this so many times, I've just lost count. Um, it's from a song I wrote called Majesty. It's on my album Bare Bones, and you can download it from iTunes. And I'm about to teach you the entire tune. But please do me a favour, and please vote for Faith in the MIA Awards, and because uh, that will really help me and Faith long term take over the world with their acoustic goodness. Vote here. There's no registration, you just click a button, that's it. So, let us begin with our learnage of doomage. Um, I'm tuned down a half step because vocally that fits with my vocal range nicer. Please allow myself to introduce myself. <laughs> so, we're going to start off with, um, well, the whole thing is in hybrid picking. So, if you haven't hybrid picked before, you're probably in for a shock. It's, um, there's a learning curve, but once you get it, it's really, really easy. You could do this with just fingers, but for the strumming parts, it really sounds best with a plectrum. So you want to get used to using a plectrum and your fingers and plucking one or two strings or three at the same time. Take it nice and slow. Drink plenty of coffee. If you get frustrated, have a break. Play some Diablo and vote for Faith Guitars in the AMI Awards. So let's start with are swearing or second finger on the third fret E string. Uh, I'm just going to refer to the strings as if they're tuned in standard. And I put my little finger on the uh, G string at the third fret. So two fingers at the third fret. And all I'm going to do, and this is where you, you can sort of practice this part to develop the hybrid picking you're working on, is I'm going to pick down on this E string and I'm going to pluck up with my finger here on the G string. But to give it a little uh, major country twang, I'm pulling the little finger down. It's like a blues curl, it's not an entire semitone, but it's pretty close to it. And then I take my little finger off and pluck them both again. And that's the basis of the song, really, it's, it's the structure that I built everything from. So. So again, that's just both the E string and the G string at the same time, pulling down the little finger as I pluck. Then I pluck them both again and let the little finger off to the open G string. And then all I'm gonna do now is uh, pluck. I'm always using this finger, by the way. I have occasionally plucked with a little finger, but I'm using this finger and the plectrum for almost everything I'm picking here. Um, I'm now gonna pluck the open D string and a hammer on at the third fret using my second, sorry, my third finger. So you get uh, Before that, there's one bass note. It's like a ghosted, muted uh, bass note. 
So it goes bass note, and then pluck that D string, and hammer onto the third fret. So that bass note really is very subtle. It's what I call a pacer. It keeps the pace of the music flowing. It's a bit like a foot tap, that kind of thing. So the next thing is we're going to do that bass note again, and we're just going to pluck the open G string. So that kind of completes the first phrase, and I would say that's a nice little exercise to refine and work on and get your hybrid picking up to scratch, so it sounds like this nice and slow. That's it. Practice that. Notice now that I'm actually using my ring finger to pick some of these and then changing to this uh, one, two, the second finger for the, the open string that I'm hammering down. So, really, it's whatever finger fits with you, people with the different sizes and shapes. But I'm going ring finger or one, uh, third finger, pluck off, bass note, second finger. So, There's a little kind of turnaround piece here for you, which is just uh, second finger plucking the D string open, first finger to the first fret A string, pull off, and then back to that bass note. So the whole phrase, including the turnaround, is this. Here it is slowly for you. plugged into a silverback amplifier from a currently undisclosed amplifier brand, soon to be disclosed. <laughs> uh, here's what the guitar sounds like without an amplifier. Sounds great, it sounds actually quite loud, bearing in mind the size structure of this incredible guitar. It's just it's got really good bracing, really clever design work inside from Patrick James Eggle. Um, vote for Faith in the MIA Awards. Vote here. And once you've done so, we'll continue. Make sure you've got a coffee at hand. It's the vital life juice of the guitarist. So that's the first chord, clearly a G, outlined in this tune, Majesty. <laughs> So we play a bunch of those and then I change chord. So I'm going to an F chord. And all I'm doing here is leaving my first finger at the first fret on the E string, which is the F note, little finger to the third fret on the G string, and I'm using my second finger right behind it, which I kind of leave there. So I can go back from the little finger on the third fret to the uh, my third finger on the second fret. And all I'm doing is bass, <clears throat> both of them at the same time, and then again, just like the first riff. So you hear the bass note and the corresponding chord note at the same time, which is a nice pleasing dyadic sound. So. <clears throat> And then bass ghosted muted palm note. <laughs> and then make sure your first finger's arched slightly so that you can pluck an open D string. <laughs> Leaving your third finger down, use your little finger that once you've plucked that D string, you hammer down at the third fret to give it that sound. So you get like that. So, so far. And then we're going to go ghosted palm note, and then that lovely second fret on the G string. So all together nice and slow, you've got this. I'll do that super slow for you. That's your F. Now to a C, and this completes the holy trinity of uh, majesty chords for you. So 
so um have to remember it myself. I play it so much that it's just kind of autopilot chappers. So we're going to be using first finger on the C note on the A string third fret, which sounds like this. And we're going to be using little finger again on the uh, fifth fret G string. So we're going to go bass note and then both of them at the same time. Sounds great, doesn't it? So bass, both, and then bar down. So the beginning, the third fret A and the third fret G. Now, quick tip on uh, barring, but before we do, vote for Faith at the MIA Awards right here. Good. When you're barring, <clears throat> many students tell me that they find it difficult and the strings slip underneath their first finger. Now, there are two ways of really making this easier for you. The first thing is, if you take a look at the front of your finger, you'll see it's designed to curve like this, and there are grooves in the finger um, that if you look at it sideways on, are almost like pockets that the string could slip underneath, and it's harder to press against the fretboard with a finger that's flat and a finger that has the grooves. What you want to do is slightly put it on the side of the finger, so we're using the outside edge of the finger, which is flatter and straighter. And you can, you can demonstrate that by just running a finger across the, front, the, the, sort of the underside, you can fill the pockets, and on the side it's flatter and straighter. So when you bar, you want to use more of the side of the finger and less of the front of the finger. The front is also softer, the, the side is a bit harder. The next thing is, when you think about, <coughs> pardon me, when you think about pressing into the fingerboard to press down and cause the bar, lots of people tend to put their mind in the tip of their finger. And if you do this, if you push against the tip of your finger and then look at your first finger, it'll be arched because you, you're building a structure to push against the tip. Instead of doing that, consider pushing from the center of the finger and you'll find the finger stays straight. So in your head, think about pushing from the middle of the finger and using a little bit more of the edge for a perfect bar every time. So, there we were on the C chord. So we've got our bass, we've got both the, the notes at the same time, and then off to the bar. Ghost that bass note again. Ghost that bass note. That should be a t shirt, shouldn't it? From Cape Gears. And then we're going to pluck the um, Barahade D string at the third fret and hammer down with a little finger to the fifth fret. Ghost that bass note again. And then, and then the open. G string at the barrier. That sounded confusing to me even, so I'll play it for you nice and slow. It isn't really that confusing to do. So, here are the three chords all together, one at a time. sliding to kind of um, mimic the slap double bass while I'm doing this kind of hybrid style. So that's the verse of Majesty, available on iTunes on the album Bare Bones by Rob Chapman, who is me. Uh, the bridge is this. Check this out, I can change the phasing on my acoustic guitar, so this is it with other phasing. two different voices, I'm not sure which I prefer actually. So anyway, for the uh, the bridge part, we're playing an A sharp with our first finger, we're using the little finger and third finger at the third fret E and B, and I'm going bass, and then plucking both of the bottom two strings. So then I'm going to the open A string as the bass note, and I'm bringing my first finger to the first fret B string almost like a power chord shape. So. And then I pull that first finger off to the open B string. 
Yeah. So slowly you get this. And in fact, I tend to ad-lib that a bit. So it kind of goes. Yeah. And that's kind of mimicking some of the good old boys uh, playing some country twang. So. And then just the G chord. Time, but before we do, let's vote for Faith Guitars at the MIA Awards right here. Pause for coffee. Make sure it's fair trade and strong. Chorus is really, really easy. <clears throat> we're just going to play a C. And then we're going to play an A sharp. And then we're going to do this groovy. Which is just a G7. So, for, the, for this part, I, I step on the distortion and I palm mute rock power chords. But you're welcome to do a version, if you're going to reply to this with yourself playing a cover of the tune, which I'd love, just to do open chord. Might be nice with a nine chord there. Or maybe a... That's kind of nice, and then... So the first two parts are pretty easy, it's just power chord. Or if you want an acoustic version, C, 9, and then maybe an A uh, sharp one. Or that one. I like those chords. So the G7, here's a G7 chord for you. Just a bar, we've got a uh, major third with the second finger up here on the fourth fret, G. And then we've got this uh, fifth with my third finger here on the fifth fret, A make sure that your uh, D string is to the bar to the 3rd fret giving you the flat 7. It's what I call the dad chord because my dad always plays this chord. And all we're doing is uh, kind of a classic it's a rip of a sort of Robert Johnson style thing although it isn't anything like as good as Robert Johnson because he was absolutely legendary. So it's bass and then, and that's probably going to be difficult if you find barring hard work. Don't forget, side of the finger, press from the middle of the finger, not from the tip. So bass, uh, lifting the second finger off, plucking the open G string, hammer it down like a bad boy. So once you've gone bass, pluck, hammer, bass again, and then we're going to kind of accent with a little finger plucking the high E string to the bar. Make sure it's to the bar. Like that. Now that is a great exercise and a cool thing that you can do and move around with chords. It's the kind of style I don't often teach because a lot of people don't seem to appreciate country or mountain music, but I'm telling you, some of the country guys out there will shred the living crap out of any of the rock guys. The um, incredible technical versatility that they possess. They have a prowess. They are fierce, is what they are. So, uh, where am I? So after you've done the high E, you ghost another bass note. Ghosted. So you get to go there. Which always reminds me of uh, pancakes for some reason. <laughs> Probably because I need more coffee. So, little finger stretches out to our 6th fret B string. Now, it's going to feel like a big stretch, don't worry about it. You can let the little finger fall slightly on its side as long as it's fretting nicely. And here's the trick, and here's the kicker, as my friend from Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives says. You've got to slightly push that B string sharp, because the sound of country and blues both kinds of music, is taking that third up slightly or taking that fourth up and pushing it towards happier territories. Hear that? You don't actually go for a semitone, it's more of a quarter bend. So after you've bent it up, it's just a ghosted bass note and then a high E. Here is the G7 chord part done nice and slow for you. Here's the 
chorus slow for you. Now there is a lead turnaround that I do before I go into the solo when I play this live uh, with my band Dorje or on my own as the Rob Chapman project or whatever the fuck I'm called, I don't know what I am, uh, which is... It's, that's an approximation because I improvise it, um, so I think... Uh, Yeah, that's what I do. So it's just, I'll do it slowly for you. I'm not going to teach this because it's an improvised blues lick in position one in G. So it goes. <laughs> well, something like that. Anyway, that's Majesty by myself, Rob Chapman. Available on iTunes on the album Bare Bones by Rob Chapman. By me, Rob Chapman. Please vote for Faith Acoustic Guitars in the MIA Awards right here. It's very important to me because these guys did a lot for me. They helped me kick off Chapman Guitars. They saved my ass in many a way and they're lovely guys and they're English and all they want to do is be able to distribute their wonderful guitars around the world and offer you great acoustic guitars at a really good price. <laughs> Designed by the amazing and hilarious Patrick Egel, who is a bit of an industry legend. So if you like that, vote for them. Help me to help you. I've been Rob Chapman, this has been Majesty. I'm going to play out, see you guys later. Wow.